and I have uh, roll call. Chairman here. Here. Vice Chair Park. Here. Commissioner Obachowski. Here. Commissioner McFarland. Commissioner Morgan. Commissioner Turnbull. Commissioner Salen. Here. Okay. Um, can I get a uh, motion and a second for approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. Um, approval of agenda. In a roll call. Chairman Henry? Yes. Vice Chair Parks? Yes. Commissioner Obachowski? Yes. Commissioner Salem? Yes. <clears throat> okay. Uh, public comments on agenda items only. Are there any comments on the agenda? Hearing none. We'll move for approval of the minutes from August 22nd, 2024. Motion for approval in a second. Second. Roll call. Chairman Henry? Yes. Vice Chair Parks? Yes. Commissioner Abachowski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Saylor? Yes. Okay. Item number five. We have a presentation. Is yes, uh, Chris Barr is going to be giving us a presentation on the landmark dividend uh, for Verizon rooftop antenna. So, welcome, Chris. Excellent. Thanks so much for having me, guys. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Chris Barr. I'll try to make this as brief as possible. I know you guys have a lot to get to today. Um, just a quick little bit about me. I'm a local from Champaign here, born and raised, graduated from Centennial High School. Um, and my family's also been involved in real estate champagne for, gosh, 70 years now. So I've uh, got a pretty good grip on the industry as a whole, especially this market here in Champaign. Um, so it's great as my dad and uncle are who've been doing business here in Champaign. I'm not with Bar Real Estate. I'm here representing Landmark Dividend, um, as you guys can see by the slides. So I'll get into a little bit of, of who we are and exactly what we do. Um, so we're a third-party aggregator of telecom leases. And as you can see up on the slide, uh, we work with a range of clientele. Um, we work with municipalities, municipal entities such as yourselves. We work with large corporate landlords who have you know, multiple cell tower antennas on their sites. And then if you think about where cell towers are, a lot of times smaller rural farms still go and work with individual landlords on a frequent basis as well. Um, so that's a little quick snapshot of who we are. Uh, you know, we were established in 2013. We're the biggest, most highly funded aggregator of these leases. We're a subsidiary digital bridge. They're a PE firm, uh, currently valued at about 60 billion. Just got a uh, billion dollars outside investment at the beginning of this year. So again, uh, you know, definitely have funding and resources to, to complete these transactions. Um, so hey, enough about really landmark who I am. Uh, kind of getting to who you guys are, what you have. Um, you have on 108 Washington a cell tower panel, and slides almost going to be made. But you guys have a cell panel on your site at 108 Washington, uh, which Verizon has an easement on. Um, what exactly are these easements and how really do they work? Uh, if you go one more slide, that would be great. Um, so these easements are basically an agreement you guys have at Verizon uh, that allows them to put their equipment on your guys' site and access that site to make improvements on the equipment, etc. cetera. Um, so to be clear, they do own the antenna, um, but you guys are the landlord of that site. And to secure that easement and to make sure that you're compensated for that easement, you guys have a lease with Verizon. So Verizon's currently paying you guys just shy of $1,400 a month, uh, 1391 to be able to you know, use that cell site, cell site to kick out cell signal to the community. Um, essentially what Landmark Dividend is looking to do is purchase that lease uh, from the Champaign Housing Authority. So why exactly go through this transaction? Um, you know, it's found money to you guys. It didn't cost you anything to have Verizon approach you and give you $1,400 a month. So why exactly would you want to get rid of it? Well, in every single one of these cell tower leases, and it's not unique to your guys, it's every single one, they have a termination clause that states that Verizon can cease paying rent, take down their equipment within usually
usually 60 to 90 days for any reason that they're choosing. So again, what we're looking to do is come along and buy that easement and buy that piece for guaranteed cash up front. Um, currently, Miguel and I have been working together. We have an offer in your guys' hands for 290,000. Um, and so that's again, again guaranteed to cash on the table versus an unguaranteed lease. Um, why exactly would we want to buy it if it's not a guaranteed revenue stream? Well, again, we are part of a larger fund. We've got about 6,000 of these assets currently in our portfolio. So if one of our leases goes away and they take a tower down, it doesn't happen often, but it can happen. We have 6,000 other assets to fall back. For you guys, it would just be a $1,400 shortfall in your guys' budget each and every month. So in exchange for that lease, we'd be willing to fund you guys 290,000 upfront to purchase it. Um, not sure what the room's knowledge of cap rates and how um, you know lease pricing terminology works. Um, a cap rate is basically the income divided by the purchase price. It's how people assess real estate on a cursory level around the country. Uh, if you look at national brick and mortar trading, also keep in mind, lower the cap rate, the higher the purchase price. The higher the cap rate, the lower the purchase price. Um, Champagne's sitting at about a six and a half to seven cap market. Uh, the rest of the country is currently about a six cap market. We are currently have an offer to you guys for a five and a half cap. So we're willing to pay a five and a half cap on an unguaranteed paper. <coughs> bricks and mortars are going for about a six and a half, seven in this market. Um, it's a big reason why landlords uh, end up doing these transactions. They can find other properties to invest into. In your guys' case, uh, Miguel and I have been talking significantly about youth bill. Um, this is a cause that's really near and dear to my heart. I do a lot of these transactions around the country. Very rarely am I able to do one, A, in my hometown, which is such a privilege to be back. Um, but B, I, I do care about what happens in Champaign. My family still lives here. Uh, I'm still involved in this community. My dad is involved in a significant amount of youth uh, violence outreach. So to be able to move forward with the transaction where I truly believe in the use of proceeds and being able to fund a youth build with $290,000 for this variety of projects you guys have going on uh, in exchange for us buying an unguaranteed revenue stream, um, it's, it's, it's a transaction structure that I genuinely believe in. I'm excited about the use of proceeds, which I can't often say uh, for a lot of these transactions. So I know I threw a lot at you really quick. Again, trying to keep it brief so you guys can move on to other agenda items, but happy to feel any questions you guys might have at this time. Please. Um, I'm not sure if this would be for you or for um, Walton. Um, how, do we have a, like a, an end date on our lease with Verizon currently? We currently do. It's in 2047. So you guys have about 23 years left of guaranteed <laughs> term on that lease. Uh -huh. And again, they do reserve the right in their termination clause. Um, and if you at any point want to get in touch with me, I'm happy to pull up the specific sure. language and highlight it. Um, but they do reserve the right to walk within 60 days for any reason they're choosing prior to that time. So they do not need to wait for um, the lease expiration to take down site if they choose to do that. And so I'm assuming within that lease there's some sor sorts of information about like if the tower, like like damages our property does that still is there still something within there like you know their equipment or whatever falls tower falls under is on our roof like it fell if it fell down and hurt our roof and we had to get a new roof like does that change at all with you all owning the lease instead of no and in fact um that's one of the other big reasons that landlords come to us and approach us is we have an entire asset management team so it's working with a rancher in colorado who had a tower on their site Verizon left the gates to their ranch open when they came to work on the site, and all their cattle got. And so they had to spend the day grabbing their cattle. Um, so they'll specifically reach out so they can utilize our asset management team as a liaison between you guys and Verizon for any reasons um, that you guys need. And yes, they are obligated to you know, correct any advantages that might happen. Um, but again, we can help facilitate that communication. The other thing is, um, just out of curiosity, are you guys doing any marketing efforts on this site to try to bring on additional tenants or additional revenue or additional towers or panels at all? Um, no, not around the cell towers or anything like that, but we're always uh, leasing the property. And yeah, that's the case uh, with often with landlords is, you know, either whether they're a housing authority, whether they're a farmer or a real estate investor, uh, reaching out to telecom companies to try to bring on additional revenue is not part of their daily agenda. So uh, that's something that we do on each one of these deals is we'll be marketing this rooftop to try to bring on additional tenants to it. If and when that happens, we split all that revenue going forward with you guys 50-50. So um, 
so it would be the $290,000 at close, and then it would be 50% of all future revenues, which would be actively marketing to Treasury bonds. Any other questions at all? Thank you guys Thank so much. You. Really appreciate the time. Thank you. Did you wanna discuss this at a later date or what? Yeah, I think we can dis we can discuss it at a later date. Um, so, you know, just wanted to bring it to the board's attention what the proposal was, but we have not internally made a decision. So, okay. I don't want to catch you off guard, but it, it, uh, what's your feelings? Okay. Um, I don't know. I think McGill and I still have to discuss it a little further, so we can bring back some more information. You and your staff and everything. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's we fine. can bring back more information at the December meeting on whether or not that's something we'll take advantage of. Okay, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're, we're down to uh, item six, our new business, and we have some resolutions that we need to get approved today. So uh, the first one is 20, 24-7 approval of the 2025 administrative plan. So we're going to have some discussion on that and go with your recommendations. Yes, there was just, um, I think at the last meeting, Jennifer went over the changes, and so there was just, um, it was been out for public comment, and so we're just asking the board to approve the admin plan now. If no board members had any uh, questions or anything, I'll make a recommendation that we approve the 2025 administrative plan. And I'd like to have a motion and a second. I move that we accept resolution 2024-7. Second. Uh, roll call. Chairman Henry? Yes. Vice Chair Parks? Yes. Commissioner Obrachowski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Turbull? Yes. Commissioner Taylor? Yes. Okay. The next one is uh, 2024 Dash eight, approval of the moving to work 2025 annual plan. Um, so Stephanie is gonna come up and give a presentation on the changes. It's been out for public comment. Um, and we actually, so thank you all for being so flexible to move the meeting this early in the month because we've got to get the plan submitted about the 15th. So she's gonna go over the changes for this 2025 plan and we're excited about some of the things we have going on. Versus 
slowing down the process and we get things started immediately. <coughs> and then finally, our third new activity is emergency housing supportive services. So we will be partnering with the local homeless services agency to improve services for the little homeless, um, for individuals and families in Champaign County. And this activity allows us to provide a million dollars in financial support for emergency housing to help secure temporary housing for those currently living on the streets. Any questions about any of those activities? If there's no questions, I'll make a... Oh, she's got more modifications on the next page. Yeah. Oh, you got <laughs> <laughs> Those are the new activity. Now we need to modify some of our former activities that have already been approved by others. So one of those is our LSS program. As everyone knows, we have our shift program where our families can earn incentives as they accomplish goals. And prior, we had a 12-month waiting period that they had to be compliant on our program for at least 12 months. We decided to eliminate that. We want our parents, I mean, not our parents, but our clients to be able to get in the program right away versus having that time frame that they had to wait. But we feel like it's just very beneficial to them. Additionally, when our families become zero hack, means they can increase their income to the point they will be terminated from the program. Instead of removing them from the program after 60 days, we raise that time to 120 days. Also, with our local home ownership program, we eliminate the, the minimum income for home ownership. Because uh, one of the requirements is they have to be pre-approved by a lender anyway, and they already established those guidelines for us. And so we have some families that have not quite made that amount, but have been approved and they weren't eligible for the program. So we decided to eliminate that part of it. And then also households applying for home ownership must be enrolled in our SHIP program. So then they can earn additional incentives for working towards home ownership. With our sponsor-based voucher program, we've included working with um, three additional populations. So those are mental health or substance abuse. So we're going to work with a, send out a request for those service providers to um, come in partnership with us. Um, we are expanding reentry, as you know, we already work, work with first followers and win recovery, but we also have people who have not gone through those programs who have, you know, a judicial past that we want to be able to help them as well. And then also we'll be working with Cunningham Children's Home. So we have our FYI, FYI program, which works with, with Foster Youth, but some of the children that are in these programs aren't in eligible for that program, as you know. So this will allow us to provide voucher and housing for that population as well. <clears throat> then we have the Small Business Opportunity and Workforce Development Center. Um, so our Workforce Development Center will be housed at our new office location on Netflix. And in addition to that, we will now have a tiered approach to funding for the Small Business Program. Um, prior, they could just apply for $10,000 worth of funding, but we decided to do a tiered approach instead. Um, so for the first tier, it, it, we call it the foundational grant, which is for $5,000. A lot of our families or people with interest in home ownership, they use that $10,000 to take business classes or, you know, get that development side of things. So when they actually got their business started, they were running out of funding. So we decided to do a foundational grant where they could use that money to work on their education, business classes, get business coaching, get assistance, get their business plan together, et cetera. And then the second part of that would be the small business grant, which is up to $10,000. And that's what they can use on actual expenses like licensing, insurance, equipment, inventory, whatever it takes to get their business up and moving. And then finally, once they've been established and doing well, but they maybe want to expand on their business, then they can apply for a small business loan that we will, they would have to repay, but it would be repayable at a low interest rate. 
supportive services, the funding just has been increased from 200,000 to 300,000. And for our mid area shelter, we also have a bit of increase to the cover the cost of the purchase of the property that we're going to use for that program. Any questions so far? Thank you, Stephanie. Okay. Well, there were no questions, so I assume that we'll be ready for approval of the Moving to Work 2025 Annual Plan uh, motion <coughs> and a second. And probably moved in second. Roll call. Chairman Henry? Yes. Vice Chair Parks? Yes. Commissioner Ogachowski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Trimble? Yes. Commissioner Salem? Yes. Okay. The next one is um, Resolution 2024 9, approval of project based vouchers for Maple, Maple Grove Central. All right, so Maple Grove Central is the property located at 209 North Central um, in Urbana, and we purchased it in partnership with our, our RPC, and it is going to be uh, an expanded opportunity to house the uh, formerly homeless. And so uh, we have attached project base where we are asking the board to allow us to attach project based vouchers to that development, and there's a total of eight that we'll be attaching on the contract. You said eight? Eight. Okay. Can we get a uh, approval for 20? Uh, uh, we, uh, we approve resolution 2024-9. Second. Roll call, please. Chairman Henry? Yes. Vice Chair Parks? Yes. Commissioner Obachowski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Turnbull? Yes. Commissioner Salem? Yes. Okay. The next item is approval of Cubit development contract. All right, so this is uh, for a development consultant. Um, last month, I believe, we brought the RFP and asked to award the contract, and this is just us bringing the contract back uh, for Cubit development. Right. Approval for uh, a motion and second. So moved. Roll call. <laughs> Chairman Henry? Yes. Vice Chair Parks? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Commissioner Turnbull? Yes. Commissioner Salem? Yes. Okay. That's the last one. All right. Um, item number 10 is discussion of, of the 2023 audit. Okay. And I think Miguel is going to talk about that during the financial um, section, so I guess we could kind of table, table that, that we until, get to his report. until the financial report. Okay. Um, it's time for executive officer's report. Can I ask a question, Mr. Chairman? On the, on, in this handout, there was uh, on the back of one of the pages, your pilot for items, uh, some other items that we didn't cover. Is that intentional or? I think that was from last year. Oh, but we just still on the PowerPoint. Okay, I just want to make sure that we didn't overlap something. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The word official. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so first we want to recognize our champion of the month, Mr. William Connors. So, um, what was written about Mr. Connors is that he has earned the title of champion of the month for his exceptional dedication to his role as a maintenance tech. His consistent hard work and reliability have been invaluable assets to the team. Not only does he consistently meet deadlines, but he also goes above and beyond to ensure that the facility is well maintained, operating smoothly. 
Mr. Connor's commitment to excellence is evident in his meticulous attention to detail and his positive attitude. His dedication and reliability make him a true champion on our team. So congratulations, Mr. Connor. We appreciate you. All the day. And Dwayne and Robin, would you all like to say anything about Mr. Connor? <laughs> all right. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm the making supervisor, and this is real good. Congratulations, Mr. Connor. We attended uh, the NARO conference uh, last month, and there we won eight awards uh, for Pinewood Place, our community rescue plan, which was our partnership with um, uh, both our the city of Urbana, the county, and uh, the city of Champaign for all of the ARPA funds that we received. Um, I think we were the second highest funded uh, agency through ARPA in the county, and so um, just we detailed in. Um, detailed the partnership and how we expended those funds um, and won that award. Uh, the Youth Build Habitat Build, uh, Education and Community Connection Initiative, the Mental Health Initiative, Next Steps Program, Youth Build City Grants Initiatives, and the Home is Possible Initiative. So we won eight awards, so that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And several staff and uh, board members attended. It was a really, a really nice conference. Um, and the hurricane didn't hit us. <laughs> so we were a little worried about it. <laughs> um, next up, you may have noticed that we launched a new newsletter that we'll be sending out monthly. Um, and we've called it the Housing Hub. <laughs> it's corny, but we, that's the name we came up with. And so that's going to go out monthly. And it's just our new effort to really try to keep the community educated on what we're doing. Um, I hear a lot that people don't know what's going on at the Housing Authority. So just trying to get that out. And so. Um, if you see it, make sure to share it on your social media and whatever else you have to get that, that information out. Um, we didn't have a meeting in September, and so some of this is August's news, but Youth Bill did have another graduation. Um, and so this is for the class of 2024. We were really excited for them, and it was held at the Orpheum Theater. Um, and then on the next page, we've got a picture of the, all the graduates. And then we also started a new cohort for Youth Build, and they have selected 21 uh, young people. They literally, the day after, the Monday after graduation, they had mental toughness, and so they jumped right in. The staff didn't get a break, um, and they um, invited over. I think they invited around 50 young people to the um, to the to mental toughness and selected 21 of those 50. So. And then some Housing Choice Voucher Program updates. The MTW vouchers are at 92% lease, so that's um, making a lot of progress. Um, we've still overall got to get our overall leasing up, but MTW is the biggest chunk of that. And so with them being at 92%, that's great. So, uh, we selected so many out of the ones we had. The ones that didn't get in, are they eligible to try next time? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we have 565 people currently out searching, so they have done a very great job of getting people pulled off the wait list and screened for eligibility. Um, so of those, an additional 383 people are currently being screened for eligibility. And they have completely exhausted the wait list from 2023. And we are still waiting confirmation of applicate, the applicants for 2024. So we um, haven't yet finalized that, that uh, wait list. But as soon as we do, we'll get notice out to the uh, community so people can check their status. A big part of HCB getting to where they are with lease up is the supportive services. Um, and so in total in August, we spent 55000 around fifty, almost $56,000 in supportive services. That includes security deposits, application fees, furniture assistance, transportation, landlord incentives, and utility assistance. Um, and then 
in September, we spent around 28,000 um, covering those same areas. And so our LSS and MTW team works really hard to support uh, the volume that HCV is pulling with supportive services. So a lot of these things like application fees and security deposits, um, we wouldn't be able to lease as fast if we weren't offering that. And so um, LSS and MTW team has done a great job at getting um, people the support they need. Also hosted a back to school giveaway at Oakwood Trace. They had haircuts and, and school supplies and bouncy houses. A really fun activity. So just wanted to highlight that. We had a press conference with Bolo. Um, in partnership with Bolo, we received a grant from the county uh, for internet for uh, so so for it will, it will provide free Wi-Fi for over 355 HACC clients. Um, and so we're just working to help bridge the digital di uh, divide and both mayors and the county executive were present at the um, press release and so it was a really fun, they did like a really fun uh, challenge of how it, what it's like to be without internet and we had to see which uh, city represented best, so. <laughs> Champagne. <laughs> Uh, youth Bill also got their Illinois Youth Bill Coalition grant renewed. Uh, this year it was renewed at $329,000, a little lower than what we had been funded in previous years. I think the first year we got it, it was at $420,000. The second year it was at $400,000. And this year it's at $329,000. The biggest reason for the decrease is not performance based, it's because additional Youth Bill programs have been funded through the coalition. And so, since they're funding additional programs, the award ceiling was a lot lower. So, just wanted to let the board know, but we did receive it. So, um, also hosted a landlord lunch and learn on October 9th, um, and they uh, went over the moving process, the HAP contract, and the eviction process. And uh, we are going to be sending out uh, some communication. We're including in here because we don't have the flyer together yet, but we are doing a landlord um, appreciation um, dinner in November um, to just thank our landlords for being a part of the program with us and supporting our clients. And then we also hosted a Taco Tuesday on October 1st with our seniors, so that was really fun. We, I went out to Steer Place, and I think all, we all split up and went different places, but they were really appreciative of the tacos and anything left over, we took it over to Stride Shelter. So it was nice to kind of get back out there with the seniors and do something fun. So thanks to all the staff who volunteered there. Um, an update, I wasn't sure if I informed the board of this. I know it hadn't been in any of my previous reports. So I just wanted to make sure that I made you all aware that we did acquire Douglas Square uh, back in early August, I believe it was. And so um, that, is, that transaction is complete. Uh, and right now there are 17 vacancies there. And our maintenance team is working on uh, uh, getting contractors in to get those units turned. I took a tour of it a couple weeks ago, and it's really nice. Um, it's in really great shape. Uh, for sure did a good job of keeping it up. So we're excited to have that as a part of our portfolio officially. Um, Where is this? this is from Bradley? Yes. Yep, right on Bradley. Just a quick comment. Time really flies by because I was on the board when we had groundbreaking cut, cut, uh, ribbon cutting for this. And now we're back in our portfolio. <laughs> what, 15 years? Or mm -hmm. About 15 16 years, years now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the last highlight that I have is that construction for Maple Grove began actually today. Um, they had to go in and remediate some mold for the last two weeks, but today is the day that they will commence construction. And one thing you hosted for uh, ribbon cutting for, uh, I don't know, uh, one of the people that was there came to me and said, aren't you the resident commissioner? Why were you not there? And I was like, I didn't know anything about it. You said something about that or something? I believe it was in our last board report. I don't know, but I was out. confronted about it. And I couldn't recall being aware of it, because I would have came, but it was like, we didn't have a resident there, and you was a resident commissioner, and you wasn't there. So I just thought that was, I mean, I didn't feel comfortable with him saying that, but I understand that people can tell me things. Yes. When the residents kind of do it, because in that way, people want to approach me for a foolishness. Not foolishness, but you know what I'm saying. I understand. Okay. And then, I guess to Ms. Linda's point, we have our upcoming events for October and November. 
Um, and so this is just a little keepsake for you all to know what we have coming up. So there's a few resident events on here also, Miss Linda, for October, uh, some Halloween and fall things, and then what we have planned for as far as like uh, dinners for the Haven and Washington Square is here for November. So, and then that's the end of my report. And um, next up, financial. Good afternoon. Uh, it's a little small from your own on the slide, but uh, I just wanted to show the submission of our uh, uh, FPS audit uh, report to HUD. Uh, it was submitted on September the 26th. The due date was from the 30th. Uh, so I, I just wanted to mention that we we were able to comply by the two days of the six report. Uh, the next page is uh, as Lady mentioned, uh, we received the audit report and part of the part of the whole package of the audit report are the section is the PS report that we submit to good that I just mentioned. There are several other, other parts of it. Uh, it's a little, uh, hmm, a little difficult to read, but this is just a page of the opinion, which, as I always mentioned, is the, uh, the most important part actually of the audit report, uh, where it says that the financial payments are presented in, in a in a fair uh, manner, uh, they are correct. They represent correctly the financial situation of, of the entity, and in compliance with <coughs> generally accepted accounting principle. Uh, so that's that's the the opinion of the auditors. And we included the audit report in the board packet. I know it's a lot, so I have spoken to the auditors about doing a presentation on the audit. And I'm not sure if they will do it at our, we've got, kind of got to see what, if their schedule aligns with our December meeting. If not, we'll try to get them in January to do a comprehensive review of the audit for you all. Yeah, actually, <clears throat> I, I just want to mention that uh, the, we've been working with uh, with this company, Mandatem company. Uh, actually, before I uh, I started this position, and even before I started the housing authority. So it's from past experience as, as an accountant, it is usually very useful to have uh, auditors that have been working with you for a long time. Uh, it is not unfrequent that the auditors know as much as we <coughs> as you. So I think it's a, a good relation. I, uh, in several times, I've uh, asked for some advice on some how to treat some situations in the financial statements. Uh, you know, things like. Uh, the the little square situation, the central. Uh, so you sometimes need a little bit of uh, accounting advice. Uh, this uh, we did not have a board meeting the last month, so I did have information for August and September. Uh, if you could please put the next one to me. Uh, the, the summaries of the, of the disbursements that, that we usually have. And I'll just mention that in August, the uh, Healthy Authority had $550,000 on the disbursement. Uh, the, being the most important, let's just keep waiting for work, please, over there. <coughs> uh, on the next one, please. Yeah. I just want to mention, as I usually do, the most important disbursements. Uh, we had a 
I paid him to Ken Foster for $21,000, which, uh, as, as you know, as we know, it's, uh, it's for you built uh, the install program. Uh, then the following page, uh, and this is something I wanted to mention. Uh, we made a, <coughs> we made the pilot payment for this year. Uh, actually, the pilot is is uh, is calculated uh, from March to uh, excuse me from April the first to March thirty first. So it's not a calendar calculation. So this one in particular was uh, for April of 2023 to March of 2024. So actually we paid uh, Housing Authority $59,000. And on the next page, uh, there is the, the payment that was done out of the Prospect Senior account <coughs> for their pilot. Uh, uh, September, please. In September, uh, and this is something that was mentioned a few minutes ago, we made a payment uh, for uh, ABS custom constructor for the fencing of Middle World Banner. Uh, can you go one more, please? Uh, and one more. There, that's the payment over there for almost $33,000. And in the next page, uh, the demolition and, and mold treatment of Maple Road Manor, that was, that was briefly mentioned before, for $150,000. So those were the, the most uh, important disbursements in, in the past few months. Uh, if you could please go to the next page. Uh, one more, please. It kind of came up weird, but we have we have it in front of us. So okay. On. Okay. Well, uh, this is the the actual versus budget as of September. Uh, I just want to mention that uh, as far as uh, revenue, we are uh, slightly ahead of our budget. Five point five point three percent ahead of the budget. <laughs> Uh, as far as expenses, uh, we are uh, over the budget about 7.7%. And one thing that uh, I wanted to mention is I think that uh, the real versus budget is showing that we are pretty much on target. Uh, we do have some this person that we have done. Uh, I did mention the acquisition of Central, and uh, those are all funds that we should, uh, we should get back. So that should, that should leave us back to where we were before. Any questions, please? Thank you, Miguel. I have a comment. I may be the one of the youngest people in here. Can you make this look a little bit larger? Yes. 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 All right, any other discussion? If, if there isn't any other discussion, we will uh, make a recommendation to approve the August and September financial uh, approval of the financial report. I heard an approval and I heard a second, so we'll uh, roll call. Chairman Henry? Yes. Vice Chair Parks? Yes. Commissioner Amachowski? Yes. Commissioner Warnick? Yes. Commissioner Trimble? Yes. Commissioner Salem? Yes.
Okay. All the way on the land space on the agenda. Uh, 14, if I'm correct. Uh, public comments on non agenda items. Hearing none. Is there a, a reason to go into closed session? No reason to go into closed session, so. I'd like to entertain a motion and a second for adjournment. So moved. Second. Uh, roll call. <coughs> Chairman Henry? Yes. Vice Chair Parks? Yes. Commissioner Arbuchowski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Turnbull? Yes. Commissioner Salem? Yes. Adjourn. Appreciate everybody coming. Uh, I know some people had to get out there a little early, so I appreciate uh, the, all the reports that were given today. and. Participation. Yeah.